Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, or like a book club for people who hate reading. This month we're doing grab bags, so I picked the movie The Jackal, made in 1997. I bring you movie news, and this week we have Jonathan Charney, James Hello. Stevens, Ryan Preston, and the old guy's missing. So who has the description of this movie? Uh, that would be you. Oh, yeah. okay. Sure, why not? So here's, the, it's another IMDb classic. Um, an imprisoned IRA sniper is freed to help stop a brutal, seemingly faceless assassin from completing his next job. John, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, man, but I, I love your uh, uh, news reporter inflections. <laughs> I try. I figure they're probably goofier than hell. Yeah, you, I mean, you know, you're, you're getting better on your non-regional diction also. <laughs> So I actually really love the the the, the cast on this movie. I mean, because you've got Richard uh, Richard Gere, Bruce Willis, Sidney Poitier, you've got J.K. Simmons, Jack Black, and you have a few other people who are known. But I, I think there's like the main standout cast to me. Yeah. Uh, so this this movie's actually based off of the the Day of the Jackal, 1973, which I actually didn't know. I've never seen it. Has it any of you I actually haven't seen it, but I did know it was a remake. Yeah, I, I remember seeing bits and pieces of it back in the day, and 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 it seemed like kind of kind of it felt like the same sort of a movie, just you know, twenty years earlier, so a little bit slower pace, but um, you know, the same kind of kind of intrigue, who's he going after, sort of a situation. Um, but this one, uh, w one of the cons I felt was it was it was kind of like a like a copy of a copy. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It wasn't based off the book. It was based off of a previous screenplay, um, and of a, of a previous screenplay of you know something that wasn't brilliant to begin with. I wish you know. I, I most wish, of the time, when they adapt something, they're adapting it from a book, which you know has some literary value to it. I'll, I'll be but, honest. I wish I saw the original because I've always. When I first saw this movie in the theaters in 97, I actually remember hating it. Um, and the more I've seen it over the years, the more I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I, I really wish I could compare the two just to to know the differences, because there's a lot of this movie that I really enjoy, except for the computer scenes. See, I'm well, see, I, I kind of had the opposite uh, uh, um, the situation with it. Like, I, I really enjoyed it when I was younger. You know, I was probably, I don't know, 13 or so when this movie came out. And it was right up my alley, you know what I mean? It, it yeah. had all kinds of, of, of good stuff. Uh, a, a better cast than the script was worth, for sure. <laughs> Um, That's probably why you know, I Sydney, think it's such a Sydney good movie. Sidney Poitier is, is too classy of an actor. <laughs> and he really he is. almost overacts it at certain points, which is which is funny. And I think as I've gotten older, I was able to pick it apart just a little bit more. I'm, I'm kind of thinking one of the reasons I think it's such a good movie is this movie is completely carried by the three main characters, which is Bruce Willis, Richard Gere, and Sidney Poitier. I yeah. think that's the only reason why I really like it. Well, and Jack Black. Don't forget oh, yeah, Jack Black. Yeah, true. I love the Jack Black uh, scene. It's balls. Yeah, it's his movie uh, movie debut right there. Yeah, it's actually uh, in that uh, scene where Bruce Willis is testing the the gun. Yeah, he's the guy that makes the tripod. Well, no, yeah, he made the tripod, but he uh, he was ad libbed all of his lines in there. He was just told to act like an idiot. Right. <laughs> which he's, that was it. Which since then he's made a career out of. Yeah, I, basically. My my only thought is if you had some scary dude, aka Bruce Willis, tell you. You're gonna give me the molds, the plans, and everything else. Do you think you would really say I want a hundred thousand dollars? I think I'd keep my mouth shut. Do you think that you would even think I'm gonna live through this? <laughs> yeah, it was not. not. It's definitely not somebody I would I would try to renegotiate <laughs> with. Right. Yeah, especially not at the end after telling him, "Oh, I couldn't get the adamantium." Titanium but, you know, or titanium? Yeah. <laughs> the adamantium. <laughs> Welcome to the Marvel <laughs> universe. <laughs> Next stop, Brave Wolverine's um, house. But yeah, once he starts telling him, well, it didn't quite work out the way that we planned, but, you know. And, and especially after he said, well, I need 50 guys. No, 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 30, no, 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have just taken the money and run, eh? You know. Yeah, I, really. I got to say, for Bruce Willis, if I was Bruce Willis and they asked me to kiss another dude, I would not have to work the rest of my life over that scene. So that kissing scene right there, man, oh, dude. So like Holly you Berry's... You can afford me. Like Holly Berry's breast scene yeah. in, in uh, but what's it, Swordfish? Wasn't it like half a million dollars or something Yeah, like it, was, it was a good like check. Yeah, something 000. like that. Yeah, um, I mean, I, th I thought it was a, a good choice for the for, for the character. It was yeah. actually one of those, those three-dimensional moments. Like, okay, well, this is somebody who's obviously, 
you know, going to do, you know, like like above and beyond what it takes to, to hold a cover. Oh, yeah. no, I, I completely agree. I actually thought that was, that's actually one of my favorite parts of this movie is you get to see him play two or three different characters and seeing how Did he... Did John just say his favorite scene of the entire movie was Bruce Willis kissing another guy? Yeah, that's what he said. No, that's not what I meant, I, I was just putting that out there. I, I guess I should... Hi, Laura. <laughs> Let me read a fight. Let me <laughs> screw off. Um, I guess one of them saying how he does different characters, and he actually does pretty good sticking to them, even though they're all kind of the same. Yeah, basic character kind of. Well, that's yeah. that's what's kind of interesting. I mean, it, it was a good good job by Bruce Willis on that. He was, he was playing a guy who was playing another character, so it was shades of of, of both of them. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, and it actually it actually kind of kind of came through. There was there was there was good acting pretty much all around. You know, like I said, the the actors were almost better than the script. The script kind of kind of reeked of nineties action movies, you know, with dialogue and whatnot. But it was the the the, the emotion and and the, the 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 turns of the characters were really well well acted. Um, and what it really had going for it in the in the mid nineties, they really really nailed the. The idea of like a like a dynamic chase, you know, with some with some good cinematography, kind of came around, and everything was still practical effects. You know, there was no such thing as, as CGI. You know, uh, uh, what's it called? Jurassic Park just barely, you know, did a dinosaur on a screen behind people driving yeah. away. I, so everything was still blown up. Everything was still, you know, like like real weapons with muzzle flashes that are real and. I, I actually agree with you. I mean, unlike what the last Born Identity movie, Born Legends or what, not, that right, had, yeah. had a 45-minute blurry chase, I, I still love practical effects. One of the reasons why Bullet still holds up, you know, the, the chase scene at yeah. least. Right, exactly. I mean, well, it's, there's something to be said about you being able to feel like, like you can reach out and touch something in the screen, you know? It, was, was there any part in this movie that you guys really really liked that you know you like every time you see it just makes you snicker Jack well Black I mean obviously the Jack Black uh, testing the uh, giant 50 cal crazy machine gun yeah uh, no the, don't the, the, I like the end scene also when he's when he's actually about to kill the uh, the vice president um, and he's like got the thing lined up in the in the truck with the window, and he's the cop, and he's got the little pen thing. That was badass. Yeah, that that's right. And somehow uh, Richard Gear somehow noted knew exactly where the lens was on that Sony camcorder. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I have an issue because like when it, that when the scope gets blasted on his gun. Now the point of that pod was to stabilize the rifle, right? Mm-hmm. Make it not move. Mm-hmm. So when your scope gets blasted, why didn't you just push the trigger and kill the pres- the first lady? Yeah, you were already lined up. <laughs> That's a good question. That's right, because he was zoomed up, too, because he was twisting a little pen. So just... And and did anybody else think those 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 bullets didn't do enough damage? Because yeah. they would deplete the uranium. They should have shattered the building I and mean, everything else. I the only else. thing that I thought that it actually did right was when the tree fell down. When he missed? Yeah. You got the sure. target. You got <laughs> it. You, know what, you actually and, know that's going to happen. What's but... funny about that gun is, um, and the description of it in the movie, was it's one of the few times where they actually dialed it back. Yeah. You know, from, from what it's what that gun is actually capable of. Most of the time, you know, you see a 9mm shot through, like, paper. Not only does the paper come towards you for some reason, but it's a huge hole like somebody shot a cannonball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, they did do one, like, when the tree fell and then it, it hits the podium. I thought that would totally destroy that podium, but it just put little holes in it. The funniest thing... <laughs> the, the funniest, did you notice that? The, the funniest thing is, so, I, uh, according to one of my, my favorite websites, the International, International Movie Firearm Database, you know, the, the movie, they said it was a Polish ZS-133 14.5 millimeter. It turns out it was a Browning M2HB mocked up as a KPV Hemby machine gun, <laughs> which, which, which I thought was funny. I, I think it's a great use in mocking something up, but... I, I thought it was pretty funny. You had something that's a 50 caliber machine gun turning it into a 14.5 millimeter cannon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not really. sure if that's going to work. <laughs> so now there was two things in this film that actually really started getting on my nerves. And I'm going to see if you guys notice. I'm pretty sure John noticed it. I'm pretty sure Ryan did too. Which part? But, you know, I really don't want a sniper overwatching me that has absolutely no trigger control. You mean when Mal Queen was going yeah. like that? Yeah, he's like yeah, scoping the yeah, crowd with his finger on the trigger. Keep your damn finger off the trigger. 
Don't sneeze, dude. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's a light pull. It's a sniper rifle. And I, I, I love how the fact he's going, okay, there's, there's our guy. There's our guy. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. Oh, by the way, why didn't anybody panic when he shot the stupid lens? You think it would it would be like you know, just chaos? But no, everybody's like, I wonder what that was. Was that a bird? A plane? <laughs> well, oh, no, know, that's and, my head exploding. And these are the kind of things that are that are that are kind of fun for for guys like us to sort of sort of pick apart. I mean, oh, you know, totally. we're, we actually like enjoy shooting guns and and then things like that, and and are able to notice just weird little little plot holes. <laughs> So these movies are, are kind of fun for on a, on, a, on a dual level, you know. But uh, yeah, the the other yeah. one that made me really laugh was, and this is the first time I caught this. People is, I was watching how the Secret Service agents were escorting the first lady out. The dude with the blonde hair, right before they put her in the vehicle, chucked her into the vehicle like grabbed her like a sack of potatoes and threw her in i was like oh my god so if you guys ever watch this again just look for that i don't remember that that's funny (laughs) if i'm being shot at by a freaking 14 millimeter or what have you i hope somebody throws me into a vehicle (laughs) if you're being shot at by a 14 millimeter you just better bend over because it's if you get yeah yeah, i was gonna say yeah vehicle's not really gonna do much no no. matter of fact it'll be additional additional damage the only part of this movie i really hate and for some reason i I get the point of it but i don't like it was the scene where bruce willis went into his ex-girl's house and and killed the russian chick i actually thought that was useless scene i got it because they were trying to tie Oh yeah, he killed her. Uh, you know, trying to tie in their hatred of each other, and that he did this on purpose. But I always just the scene is just, in my opinion, stupid. Yeah, you know, the only thing I thought was creative was the music going on when the, when he did it. Like every time the music would just start blaring and he start shooting type thing, and I thought that was a nice little touch to it. But it really was, like you said, kind of a throwaway scene. But it was still kind of fun the way that he just like was screwing with everybody in there, and and yeah, and that the Russian chick, you can't keep your peop, your ladies safe, <laughs> you know. Yeah, the her accent he <laughs> it changed was was some something something else. <laughs> it was oh my gosh! I mean, that was that was like if if I had to try to like like think off the top of my head what a what a Russian accent sounds like. You end up so sounding like you know like Boris and Natasha. Everybody yeah, sounds like that. I mean, it was almost more Ukrainian than, than Russian. It was. Hey Ryan, you got a little quieter. Oh. Well, it's your fault. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> I mean, the lady is not actually. Uh, no, I was looking at the wrong one. R- uh, she's not actually Russian. She is from. Hartford, Connecticut. That explains a lot. You know, those those Connecticut's have those well, yeah, very and, vaguely well, Russian she's, accents. She's not Russian, otherwise the accent would have been different. But it was it was like the, whoever the voice coach coach was must have said do a stereotype of a Russian accent. You know, oh, totally. And that's Russian. what you get with the the Boris and Natasha esque. You know, Rocky yeah, and Bullwinkle. Yeah, she, wa- she watched a lot of Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> The other the other scene in the, this this movie I always thought was cool was the scene when he's getting chased by the hijackers. I'm assuming they wanted his giant cannon. Yeah. Um, you know, in the scene where he he washes the car off, sprays that caustic stuff on the the minivan, the guy touches it. I love that whole scene, now, especially especially I the meant sound. To look up what that was? What did, do you know? What he sprayed on? No, there? I've always wanted to know because I love the sound when he touches it. You hear the. And then he starts foaming at the mouth. That scene, I, I feel bad, but it's always made me laugh because he's kind of like, you know. See, okay, uh, th- th- this is this is one of those classic '90s movie plot hole things that it's like, why why on earth would you go through all the trouble of painting your car with this quick, you know, uh, wash away paint stuff when the guy is going to just find your stupid car anyway? You know, uh, like what, what's what's the whole point? Just just put that shit on there, and then they find your car, and then you can, and then they're dead. It's the, it's the same thing. It was just to look cool. It was to kill it's like a couple. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, these scenes are, are in there just to, just to be cool, but, you know, nothing more. Oh, no, totally. It was basically just to kill, like, five minutes of movie time. Yeah, basically, you know. And to have Bruce Willis shirtless during a certain period of time as he's testing that in some unknown facility in Canada. So this is what I got on the sci-fi forums. Mm. And this is what the answer 
to it was there are sub substances that can kill that will kill upon contact the army has been making germ warfare agents for decades as well as other nasty stuff that will kill upon contact what those chemicals are isn't known to ordinary citizens but rest assured they have it it probably comes from the men's locker room that's like some bullcrap answer i don't know who the hell cosmic traveler is but you're dumb <laughs> Thank you for showing that you're dumb. Thanks. I hope he blotted. I'm, I'm glad that you showed us that you're dumb. I hope he has his blanket if he's a cosmic. Wow, way to, uh, way to troll a message board on our show, James. <laughs> you're, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for showing you're dumb. <laughs> oh, the, the other, I was going to say the other scene that I actually liked, and I thought that was the only scene in the whole movie where they broadcasted what the jackal actually looks like yeah what, he, what it was in dc and it was at that that was it the senator or what no, if it was the gay the, guy the gay oh, guy's yeah. house i don't know if he was a lobbyist or senator or what type of because it looked like it looked like a government government yeah, office of a government and role. the guy gets home you know sees the sees bruce Willis's blonde hair and at some point bruce Willis just goes boom, boom, and then just you know starts eating lunch again or dinner and korean food close enough that really looked very similar to Chinese food. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, that scene, I just, I always, my favorite part of the movie is just how it just nonchalant is with killing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought, yeah, I always, definitely. I always like that scene, but you know, you know what scene that reminds me of? Now, Ryan will probably know what scene I'm talking about from Fargo, the lady oh, with the yeah. German Shepherd. How, how, like, little that scene really had to do with anything. And just kill some random person just off the bat. You know, that was what it kind of seemed like with Fargo with the, was it a post lady? I think it was. Little, little nuggets of goodness. What? Well, little, little nuggets of, of character inside, you know. Yes. Yeah. Good we, scenes, what, I guess you should, I should for, say. You know, um, we, with, with this one, it was, you know, a little more like, there, there was enough of those, those little moments. There was, there was five or six of them. They were just like, yeah, okay, this guy's just a little more ruthless than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so... So Ryan, what do you give this movie? Um, it's a three. You know, I mean, it's 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 just sort of just right there in the middle. Uh, it's a, a good entertaining movie um, that I can, you know, if it's on on cable, I'll keep watching it. So James, I kind of disagree with Ryan. If it's on cable, and I'll just watch it. Depends on what scene I come in on. But yeah, I agree. It, it's a it's a middle ground film. It's not um, blow your socks off or anything, but it, it's an enjoyable enough film that. You know, if you start it, you'll more than likely finish it. Is what I'd say. No, I I agree. So you you give it a three to five. Yeah, I I'll give it a three out of five too. You know, it's a feel good movie, and it always makes me laugh every time it's I a see feel it. Good movie. <laughs> um. So yeah, totally. I I it's a strong three out of five. Almost a four for me if it wasn't for that stupid scene where he kills that Russian lady. That's that I hate that scene personally. You know, the thing that I was gonna say is that the ending of this film was pretty much like the end of all kind of 90s action films. And very get, anticlimactic. You know, yeah, it's just very anticlimactic. You get the guy, he's got a hostage. The hostage gets away or sometimes killed. It's and the, the good ones, it gets killed. It's, but, it's the exact same scene as yeah. Speed at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, that's pretty much where it comes out to be. And, and then hopefully the old guy will give his opinion of this of this as he's been harassing Ryan about the third man. So next we're going to switch to... Oh yeah, hey Ryan, you got the third man? <laughs> Ryan? No, not yet. Ryan. <laughs> so next we're going to, we're doing Banshee uh, episode four and I'll start, right? We're doing episode four? What three. Huh? We were on three. Oh, I watched four. Did we watch four? Yeah, three Ryan? was last week. Ryan? I don't remember. Well, can we, let's just go with episode four because okay, it's the one I watched. Okay, let's go with episode four. Because my favorite scene in the whole entire hour episode was with his hacker friend in that Waffle House. <laughs> when, when he just kind of uh, like sashayed up there, grabbed a plate, and kicked all their asses. Yeah. And, and I, walked back and said, sister. <laughs> that, you know, this one, um, it gives you a little bit more insight into Job's character. Um, and it's kind of like showing that, you know, they're the characters in his past are still relevant in his in his life because i don't know if you guys remember he was in the first episode and he really wasn't there much well yeah he yeah he, i 
I was kind of hoping they'd do the gag where he showed up in different places because the second episode when he showed up on that beach and he was complaining about it was amusing, especially as he was like making crap in front of the girls in front of them. Yeah, yeah. Go get pregnant. <laughs> I, and like, shut up, Snooky. This isn't about you. Because that would have been a great gag, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, they do kind of use Job's character as like kind of a gag thing for a long time until they really... Until what the third season, Ryan? I Ryan, mean, I think he's dealing with his casserole. Ah, so anyways, so okay, so I guess we're gonna we're gonna switch to movie news. Is there anything else about this uh, movie you really yeah, but this the move that this, this episode of the TV show that really stood out to you? Um, you know, I don't think so. I think this one is just kind of a plot motivator. It's not really anything that is outstanding of an episode. Like, I really enjoyed the third episode. Like I said to people, is that fight scene is the most realistic fight scene that you'll probably ever see. But this one is kind of just a little bit of shenanigans with the plot move. That's I can see that. So basically, the, our favorite, my, my favorite scene is the, the yeah. best. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. Want to remind everybody, we do have a Facebook page. Do you love us, hate us? Do you think we suck? We'll even read you on air. Let us know. Is there a movie or genre or theme you'd like us to do? Hit us up on the Facebook page, and we'll, might, we, we'll, we'll do the movie because, well, we want requests. Please. Also, how about pause for the cause and donate some money to Old Guy Tech TV so we can be like a cord motels and leave the light on. Thank hold on, you. hold on. If you guys ever put a Scorsese on there, I won't do it. Thank you. You know it's gonna He's happen. Bullshit. Now. He's bullshit. We're crap. gonna we're gonna end up doing a Scorsese. I, hate I, Scorsese. Can, I, I I hear one coming. I'll watch Dog Day Afternoon before I watch Scorsese. <laughs> Holy shit! Thank you. One day we're gonna have to do a James Rant episode, and he'll talk <laughs> about that movie because it's hilarious. <laughs> Until then, stay tuned. So, a couple interesting things that the the trailer of Suicide Squad came out. Yes, and that's that's on our Facebook page. I'm actually excited about this movie. You know, I think I gotta go with your dad on this one. You know, I'm so sick of comic book things, but you know, it seems like Hollywood's not gonna do anything else. Like we've said multiple times, is not gonna do anything. But they know there's a sure thing. Oh no, no, I, I, I completely it's agree. Kind of lame, but you know, that's and the truth. The one reason I'm really interested in this movie is this is the first movie with a Joker without Heath Ledger. And if, if you've been watching this this show for any length like, of yeah. time, he is the best Joker. Yeah. Um, he, Too bad he, broke back. He, he took over Jack Nicholson's crown easily. So I'm, I'm hoping this is good. I think it's going to be in a different direction, though. Well, do you think that they'll still kind of go with... Um, like psychotic? Yeah, kind of like the Luke Skywalker. The, I think you would have... The to, Joker. I think you would have to, because that's the character. But which way do you take it? Yeah. Like maniacal, like crazy, crazy, you know, cartoony. I mean, how do you... Well, I mean, the one Joker that I didn't really like was the one um, that was kind of like the the bouncy Joker from... I think it was the Batman. Was it the Batman? But uh, Like the, the, the movie, cartoon? The or cartoon. Oh, okay, yeah, you talked about the, 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 the one that came out in the 2000-something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't find it. I was it was like it the, the, the one that had, like, like parkour style yeah, to fight. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of like a... But it was like Rastafarian one. Yeah. I, you know, no, I actually kind of agree. I mean, it, that character wasn't the Joker that I personally fell in love with. If you can fall in love with a psychopathic, maniac, maniac, insane Go guy. Go watch the Batman from the 90s. The cartoon. Bingo. <laughs> and... Another one, another piece of news that I'm actually kind of excited about is Mel Gibson to be creative advisor on a second World War film. And the reason why I'm excited is Mel Gibson's getting into cinema somehow. Yeah, he's got a, he's got back in. I'm, I'd rather see him just direct his own movies because every one of his movies have been amazing. Yeah, but if any, you know, young upcoming directors are thinking about making a break into Hollywood, don't do what Mel Gibson did. Don't burn the juice. <laughs> don't do that. That's just no, no. Where's Where's Ryan? We need, we need some sort of joke. Ryan, hello. 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 Well, so I guess we're going to go on a speed round. John C. And Riley confirmed he signed on for another Wreck-It Ralph. Not excited. Eh, that, I, really, I liked the first I liked one. Wreck-It Ralph, but... 
Do you well, really need to keep going? The, well, the question is, when you first when you first heard Wreck It Ralph, Ralph was coming, were you excited about it? Because when I first heard it, I was like, man, it doesn't really excite me, but it's entertaining. There's a lot of references to I older movies. I liked the but, premise of it because it was really like you just like you mentioned is the games thing, and if you were an arcade game player back in the day, you got the a lot of enjoyment out of kind of the nostalgic things that they did with the, with Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, totally. So I enjoyed that part of it. I was kind of excited to see what they were going to do with it. I wasn't disappointed, but I don't think we need to keep going because this is just a rip-off of Tron. Uh, in in a very... Very loosely, I yeah, guess Yeah, very loosely thing, but it, it's just a rip-off of the plot of Tron, and that kind of bugged me out, you know? And honestly, I was a let down by the Tron 2. Yeah, I really like the first one. He hates Tron. Yeah, I don't hate it. Just to really oh, like it. now you're backtracking after no. five years of making fun of it. No, I don't. I think it's a not a great film, but it was it wasn't that bad. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. It was better than the Never Never Any Story, which I, ended. Jerks. And I won't forget that. In the I'm happy, but what the hell moment? The classical '80s sci-fi, and this is this is the title, by the way. As my iPad just crashed, the classical, the Blade classic Runner? 1980s sci-fi movie is getting a reboot using virtual reality. Can you guess what Blade it is? Blade Runner, the Last Starfighter. Oh god! And by the way, I actually like that movie, but I'm not sure if you can use classic and the Last Starfighter in the same sentence. I'm pretty sure you get close to Blade Runner. Um, but according to this, uh, according to Variety, Starfighter, scribed by Jonathan Butel, is working on a TV spinoff titled The Starfighter Chronicles. And much like its predecessor, its press predecessor is looking to push the boundaries of what is possible with technology. Do you think they're going to do like that scene that they did in The Last Starfighter where everything like freezes as they're falling and all that crap when they go into warp or whatever? Was it warp speed or some crap like that? Yeah, some whatever they call it, Starfighter speed. The drive turned on or something. I... The Omega Drive. You know, I'm, I'm, I actually like the movie, but I just don't know if this is going to be good because it might be like that cheesy cartoon, that cheesy live action TV series. It was like, uh, it was like X Men. It was like the Mutant Chronicles. How was it? it was very cheesy. Uh, I don't yeah. think this is going to be good. Instead no. of being like Stargate, it's going to be like you know the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> Which I have finished that. I watched the entire thing. <sighs> Somebody needs to help him. And I know we're finish. I know we're coming up. I have it on my computer if you want to watch it. <laughs> and and another hopefully it's over moment. Resident Evil, the final chapter, is now gonna start soon. Can we give a round of applause to hoping to ending it with Mila Djokovic? You know, I actually liked the first one and the second one you kinda had a little bit like, okay, they could turn it around, and then the third one you're like, What the hell are you doing? I wonder what happened. The hell are you doing? Pushing buttons. Um. Anyways, but yeah, just to end it. Just, just get over with. Rip it off like a bad, you know, scab. And oh, jeez. What? You still rip going? it off like a bad scab. You still going? Yeah, there was one more, and I, I actually was really excited about it, but for some reason, oh. This one is a shout out to Ryan. I wish he was watching. Hugh Jackman confirms his, uh, his last uh, X Men movie is going to be Old Man Logan. Nice. This yeah, is I heard a, that he's done. This is an awesome comic. If anybody get a chance to, to read it, you should. It's about Logan being an old guy, and it's awesome. Yeah, and this, from what I understand, Hugh Jackman is done after this. He is not going to play Logan anymore. Or again, according to him. We'll see if he sticks with that. I mean, somebody throws enough money at you, you, you got to rethink some things. But I, I actually think he's going to quit. Because at this point, I just think he's too old to, to play Logan minus old man Logan. And he's actually too tall for the role to begin with. You know, I actually liked all of his films that he did previous uh, before he became Logan. Except for the Australian just stay away from that. Um, but, you know, all of his roles that he did before that and after, uh, except for the Wolverine. All right, there's a couple of other ones. But anyways, <laughs> but after that, he did some pretty good roles. But, I mean, you know, he did some really great acting, and I would really like, enjoy to see him get back into that. No, totally, because he's such he has such a good range of, uh, of stuff. I would love to see him really see what he... He can do. And the last bit of news is the official complete trailer for uh, 
Batman and Superman Donna Justice is actually out. I saw it. Um, what do you think? I actually got to admit, I'm kind of excited for it. Because, wow. you know, there are some things, I, you know, I usually stay away from those trailers, but I just caught it. I'm like, you know what? I despise, you know, this, you know, I, I really don't like Superman, but then I was watching what they were doing and what they're going to be doing with it. And I'm actually kind of excited for it. I was looking at Ben Affleck's type of thing, and it looks like he's playing an older Yes, an old Batman, grizzly. An older grizzly Batman, and I think he might be able to do it. I'm really hoping to, come on, Ben, prove me wrong, please. Because this is, this is the one yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to, because I'm hoping you get to see the old grizzly Batman, the less Batman, the, the, the Batman that's not as, oh, I can do this, you know, that I'm the Dark Knight, the I'm just going to kill you, I'm going to get you out of my way type of Batman. That's the one I really want to see. Yeah, but it looks like, from what I can tell in the trailer, it looks like they're both going after each other, put, the, put each other in place. Yeah, and then you so see that'd be interesting. Then you see Zod's body, which I think is going to play into the bad guy. Yeah, because you also got to see Luther with a full set of hair. Yeah, I'm actually really interested in in it because you know, like I said, it's you got both fans coming in to this one, and I want to see which way the director decides to go. Because I mean, that's kind of where I want to go. Because though I don't like Superman at all. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I don't. I'm not a Superman yeah, fan. It, I'm a Batman fan. But bingo, Batman and Superman both respected each other, and I want to see if they can pull that off nicely enough to appease both fan sets. I have a feeling what's gonna happen is you know through I bet a quarter to half of the movie they're fighting and giving each other crap, and then something happens where they're forced to work together. Yeah, you know it's kind of the plot of every time they've met. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to. I totally agree. And by the way, Superman absolutely sucks. And yes, I'm gonna hate mail, but Batman is a better superhero because yeah. he has the greatest superpower of all. Come at me. Let's do it. Go on. He has. Uh, I've money. done it plenty of times. I got so many arguments as to why <laughs> Superman sucks. So Bring at, it. at some point in time, we're gonna do a, a real flicks review rants, and we're just gonna go off and see what happens and so ladies and gentlemen i gave the movie the jackal a three out of five ryan gave it a three out of five james gave it a three to five and the old man's not here so well we'll hopefully hear what he what, 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 doing my pick what he, what he thinks yeah and then you're doing your pick yeah and we're not going to be on next week we will be on the week after correct uh like we're doing two we're doing next week it's the week after we're doing next week it's the week after yeah okay. the 27th we're not so gonna okay uh, sorry, a little confusion there. Um, sorry. The one that I'm going to pick is a movie that came out in 2010 called The Debt. Hmm. And so. what TV series are we doing? Um, old Guy wasn't here, so I think that discussion needs to be brought up with the old guy. So I think we're just going to keep rolling with Banshees. He's episode five, and we'll make that decision next week Okay. with the old guy. So there's a potential for the old guy to pull the cranky card and not watch it? But so, that's right. But we will discuss what's going to happen. Yep. All right. And old guys will be cranky. And ju <laughs> and just as always, thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>